tip off one by the Jacks as Rakeem Brown Jackson. climbs the ladder. Morgan and Rattler in the backcourt alongside Brown. And here's the big man down low, Thomas Witzel. Brown behind the back pass. Yeah. Check that was Morgan on the behind the back pass. It's Brown. And That's a three a ball for Brown to begin the game. That's a great start by Brown when you have a four man that can stretch the floor. Yesterday we mentioned him almost Draymond Green like he has the ability to stretch the defense out. So Morgan with that behind the back pass to set up the three ball from Rakeem Brown. Their leading assist man and their leading scorer combining early on to give them a lead. Followed by a defensive stop. Pump fake there, drive to the basket. What the middle play there by Thomas Witzel. That's how you draw it up from the big man. Both their big men have the ability to put the ball on the floor and create their own shots to their matchup problems for San Diego. Here's Jackson for San Diego. Now Ballestero. Ballestero being asked to step up after Alex Lipovich was lost for the year due to injury. And he had a big game yesterday. A huge game yesterday, but it's a different type of game as Pomona played a lot of zone defense, so it allowed him to get open on shots. They attacked inside out. San Diego did yesterday, but Humboldt plays more man than man defense, so Ballesteros may have more of a difficult time getting his shot off today because he has to deal with Malik Morgan on the defensive side of the ball. Dyer fouled on that one. Foul called on Rakeem Brown, so he has an early foul, something to look out for. When a team has such a dynamic player, you don't want to see him get into foul trouble early. Well, it, it comes down to the best ability is availability. And so if Brown has to come out of the game, that definitely does hurt their offensive and defensive opportunity. So look for, look for the coach to pull him out at the next media timeout. Dyer hits both free throws to cut the lead to just three. Here's Rattler, who had a solid game last night. Passes it out to the big man. That was Witzel from three, unable to get that one to go. Again, you see both big men have the ability to shoot the tray ball, which opens up the defense. A scrum in the middle. Ball still loose. Eventually picked up by Clyde, but he can't get that one to go. Eric Stenholm and Coach Joaquin Wallace here with you in Stockton for the CCAA Tournament Championship game. Thank you for joining us. Here's Witzel over to Brown. Brown off front iron, I'm unable to get that one to go. Eric, that's where when you see your four and five with a two-man game. You see Witzel is defeated Brown for the, for the layup. Alert play there by Ballestero to grab that one. Looked like it was gonna be a backcourt violation, but Smart play there. Here's a drive by Cly into the lane. No field goals yet for UC San Diego. They've really struggled in the early going. I count at least three missed shots to the rim by UC San Diego. So you're starting to see the athleticism of Humboldt State. They're able to negate those shots that UC San Diego was trying to use at the rim. Brent Jackson called on the foul, his first. Witzel. And now Rattler, who switched to a black headband after rocking the white headband yesterday. I like Rattler. He's going to be a solid player for Humboldt State for years to come. Had a very nice game yesterday in their semifinal win. Nice. How about that finish Witzel. by Thomas Witzel? He also had a great game yesterday, and he's got four early points. We talked about their big men have the ability to create their own shots off the bounce, get to the rim. Jackson inside pass to Chris Hansen. Now an outside pass to Dyer, the leading scorer in the semifinal yesterday. Rocky has to be careful not to pick up his second foul. Ballestero matched up with Dillard, couldn't get a shot off, but he does draw a foul. Fouls on number 13. Coach Kinder here. I will try to get Rocky Brown out of the game now. Checking into the contest for UC San Diego, number 33, Zach McMillan. Checking into the contest for Humboldt State, number 5, Justin Everett, and number 
15. Rocky isn't time. happy on being subbed out of the game, but I understand <laughs> it from Coach Kendall's perspective. We need Rocky to play at least 32 minutes tonight. We don't need to pick up a cheap foul. You want to have your best players on the floor in crunch time. And there's one of the best players for the Tritons. Adam Clyde knocks down his first field goal of the evening. Rattler in the corner. He has a nice fan section here in Stockton. I saw a few Rattler jerseys. Great defense by San Diego here. Stolen by Dyer, who gives it to Cly. Now Cly into the lane. Excellent work to get that shot off under pressure, but unable to get the shot to go. Now here's Morgan with some great handling. Finds the open man. Three ball for Ethan Miller. Kelly Morgan, two assists on three balls early. Heck of a pass there in traffic. He's able to see the floor and get his teammates involved. Does a great job. There's a block in the defense again for Humble. And then a block on the other end. And now Morgan with a jumper. They're going to call a charge on that one. He doesn't like it. Charge drawn there by Ballestero. I think Morgan could have gave that up a little bit earlier and hit he would have got it I'll back. Great job by Ballesteros to take the charge as a turnover for Humboldt State. I like Humboldt's energy right now. They have a 10 to 4 lead with the, at the first uh, media timeout. I like what they're doing right now, Eric. Humboldt came into this as the four seed. They may have gotten a little bit lucky and then they in that they didn't have to face Chico State after they were upset by Cal State LA. But they had a commanding win yesterday. Really controlled that game against Cal State LA. They were up by almost 30. They were up by 29 at one point. Do you think the momentum from such a huge victory yesterday carries over into today or is it just a new game? Well, right now, the momentum does carry over because Humboldt State is playing to get into the NCAA tournament. So they know this, this is their only chance to get into the tournament. So they're in control of their own destiny, and you can see that they're playing like that. So they're going to be a little bit more intense right now because seniors like Rocky Brown, this may be his last game wearing a college uniform, and I'm sure he doesn't want that to happen. So Humboldt State has more at stake right now than does UC San Diego, and plus they split. So they're pretty evenly matched team coming into the game. Check Both the one on their own floor. San Diego, number 24, Corey Cox. Returning to the contest for Humboldt State. It's a 10 to 4 lead for the Jacks over the Tritons. And here's Grant Jackson with it. And now Corey Cox, outside pass to Dyer, stutter step. Jumper, unable to get the three to go. Fight for the rebound, eventually snagged by Malik Morgan. Contested shots by Humboldt State, Eric. Nikhil Azat checks in and throws up a three. There's money in the bank for Nikhil Azat. He injected some much needed scoring for Humboldt yesterday. The reserve guard, Lazat. And he's already got three points, one of one from beyond the arc. Another rebound there, and a chance to make it a double-digit lead for the Jacks. Humboldt is three for four right now from the three-point line here. Humboldt stayed well represented here in Stockton today. A loud student section behind us. And they're riding the momentum right now to an early nine-point lead. Here's Brown, tried to hit Morgan, clanked off of his knee. Pass was a little bit low. And Returning to the over. contest for UCC. That's a great idea, though, Rocky Brown had. He cut a, sla a slashing Malik Morgan to the rim. It just was off the hands of Morgan, but great idea by so Rocky Brown. For State, number 12, Colin Both of these teams have players capable of changing a game almost single-handedly in Drew Dyer and Rakeem Brown. See if they can get Dyer going. The Tritons need some scoring here as they've only made one field goal so far over six minutes into the game. The testament of their defense. Great job by Grant Jackson getting to the rim. Grant Jackson. Grant Jackson playing the Malik Morgan role on the opposite side. Excellent finish there with the left hand. I like Jackson. He's a solid player, Eric. 
Lazat with another three ball. And he knocks him down. This is Neil Lazat, two of two from beyond the arc. Six points for him, 16 points for the Jacks, and a 10 point lead. Quick answer from Drew Dyer. Drew his first Dyer. Of the evening. They have to draw something up to find Lazat. He's on fire right now off the bench with two tray balls. Here's Morgan driving on Cly. Another move, still matched up with Cly, stolen there by Cox. Morgan got too deep inside on his probe dribble. Pass inside, an attempt at an acrobatic finish there by Zach McMillan, but the rebound snagged by Brown. I think Morgan, Morgan got a little bit too deep the last time in there, Eric. Fundamental basketball. Malik Malik Morgan. Morgan rolls to the right, finds some space. Easy money for him, made two defenders miss. Excellent job of running the screen roll and extending the ball from the defender to the layup. Brown matched up with Dyer. Cox slips, trying to find the ball. He does find it. And the they're going to call this a timeout for UC San Diego and they get to keep possession. The Humboldt sideline was furious at that call. But UC San Diego will maintain possession. Shot clock down to 13. Timeout. I think that was a UC smart San play Diego. by Dyer calling the timeout there. Oh, it was an excellent job because every possession matters right now. So the, the, the last thing you want to do right now is give Humboldt State another opportunity to score. So those are 50 50 balls we talked about. That gives them a possession. Although Coach Kinder didn't like the call by the officials, he felt that his team had it for the timeout prior. But I like the idea of Dyer understanding the situation, time of possession, calls the timeout, and gives them an opportunity to score with 13 seconds left in the shot clock. 12-19 left in the first half. 18 point lead. Number two, Alaska to eight is the one score. A 10 point lead for the Jazz. Humboldt State and UC San Diego were in this tournament last year. Humboldt knocked off in the semifinals. UC San Diego knocked off in the first round. Both looking for their first CCAA title in quite some time. Powerhouses like Chico State and Pomona usually tend to be in these final games. We will have a new champion this year as we have two new finalists. The matchup last year was Chico State and Pomona. We won by Pomona. We hope to have a game similar to that one this year. That was excellent. Well, that's the beauty of the CCA tournament. Anybody can win. So what you see now is the powerhouse, as you said, now aren't in the finals. You have two teams. One is fighting to get into the NCAAs, and one that's pretty much a lock in the NCAA tournament. Here's Clyde driving on Rattler, loses the ball. Possession will go to the Jacks. Looked like last touch off of Clyde. Humboldt State has an 8-3 lead in regards to rebounds there. San Diego shooting 25% from the floor in the first half. Malik Morgan, two points, two assists, two rebounds early on, having a nice game. Leading scorer for UC San Diego, of course, is Drew Dyer. Oh. Three ball attempt from Witzel again, unable to knock that one down. Now Adam Clyde. Eric, yesterday we see Humboldt State did a phenomenal job defensively on Cal State LA. They're doing an equally impressive job tonight. Again, you see San Diego's three from 12 from the floor. Hansen down low, matched up with his opposite number, Witzel. Witzel got the better, or uh, Hansen got the better of him on that occasion. A nice roll there by Rakeem Brown as he was matched up down low with the big man. Knocks that one down. Smooth move to glide between two defenders like that. Great job of defense, getting deflections out and running in oh, oh. transition. Missed layup, live ball turnover. San Diego has to capitalize on that. They turn the ball right over. Eric, a turnover to a turnover. Drives go too crazy. You have a live ball turnover and a miss on the layup. 
San Diego secures it, comes right back and turns the ball over. San Diego is playing kind of tense right now, whereas Humboldt State is playing loose. Joaquin Brown with a steal, a layup, and then back-to-back -back turnovers there. Maybe, uh, maybe you see San Diego a little tight right now. Do you think nerves have something to do with it, especially in the case of UC San Diego having dropped behind here early? Well, UC San Diego have to rely on their defense, but the issue is that they have no one that can guard Rocky Brown. They're post players because they're post players create matchup problems because they can play in and out. They can stretch the defense with the tray ball, which opens up driving lanes for Humboldt State. Brent Jackson passes it. With Cly now. Now by Estero. Jackson again. Inside to Dyer. Back out to Ballestero from three. And he knocks that one down. He had five threes yesterday. Had a fantastic game. Showed a lot of range. His first three tonight. Eric gets started from a post-touch inside to the relocation. To the Tyrus Rattler, Jr. And one of the MVPs of the first semifinal yesterday, Tyrus Rattler, Jr. Knocks that one down and the foul. And restores an 11-point lead for Humboldt State. Humboldt State, number 13, Ethan Dillard, and number 15, Will I'll tell you what, between Rattler and Malik Morgan, they have a formidable backcourt. And their big men are playing exceptionally well. Thomas Whistle is having a great season and a great tournament as well. Tyrus Rattler, the redshirt freshman out of Oakland. Unable to convert the three-point play, but a nice drive to the basket there. Fly trying to do the same. Passes to Kenny Frazier. Frazier had two thunderous dunks in the game yesterday his first bucket of the night. That was great defense, but great offense. He was able to find an open man for the easy layup. Here's Rattler. You see they're trying to post up Malik Morgan on Ballesteros. Got a drive by Morgan, pass inside. What a pass Jack by Malik Morgan. Cobb. Finds Jack Cobb, the 6'8 freshman out of Garden Grove. You see what they're doing. They're trying to post up Malik Morgan. They feel that he has a matchup he can win off of Bellicero. 11 point lead for the Jacks. Here's Grant Jackson outside to Ballestero. Ballestero looking for an angle. Leaves it for Jackson. Shot clock at eight. Now Dyer, shot clock at four. Humble deep is a suffocating here. Shot from Dyer was no good from distance. Rebound by Dillard. Great job defensively by Humboldt. They're locking down, they're out in the passing lanes, they're getting deflections, they're rebounding the ball. It's one shot and out for San Diego. Here's Rattler, leaves it for Morgan. And they call an illegal screen. They're gonna call that one on Will Taylor. So a turnover there. An opportunity for San Diego to try to stem the ties. They've really struggled out of the gate here. Been down by nine to 11 points over the past five minutes. Unable to really get a rally going. He starts with the defense here. Yeah, Humboldt State has played phenomenal defense, but they're carved Adam apart there Clyde. by Adam Cly, who has a chance to complete a three-point play. That's a great drive to the room by Adam Cly. Count the basket. Now, if he can knock down his bucket, I'll be feeling pretty good fit. if I'm Coach Olin for Adam UC Clyde San Diego. Although well. I'm not playing and shooting well, I'm still in this basketball game. There's plenty of basketball left, obviously, with eight minutes in the uh, first half. Cly completes the three-point play to cut the lead to just eight for Humboldt. If you look at the game, you would think Humboldt should be up by more. A testament of San Diego to be down by eight. And they, they are not shooting well from the floor as well. Here's a matchup down low between Witzel and Frazier. Frazier forces it. a low percentage shot there. Rebound by Jackson, who tries to take it the whole way. And he gets rejected by Wilson. Official media timeout. 
timeout on the floor. 7.50 remaining in the first half. It's Humboldt State 24, UC San Diego 16. Let's throw it to a quick commercial break here on GoCCAA.org. left in the first half. Humboldt State with an eight-point lead here in the CCAA Men's Basketball Championship. It's the title game here in Stockton. The first of two games we'll bring you today. We have the women's title game coming up at 7.30. For the Tritons, here is Grant Jackson. Now Dyer, travel call on Drew Dyer. And another turnover from UC San Diego. This defensive look that I'm seeing from Humboldt State, is it a zone? No, I mean, they're, they're basically playing lockdown man-to-man -man defense. They're doing a great job. Again, San Diego shooting 31% from the floor. You see San Diego, Humboldt State is shooting 66% from the field in the first half, which is remarkable. Rattler a big part of that. Here's Witzel calling a play. Gets it to Brown. Brown matched up with Frazier. Easy money for Rocky Brown. The senior doesn't want this to be his final game. You can see the effort level, level and the will to win as he's encouraging his teammates as he runs up the floor. Brown pumped up about that one. Ballesteros shot. Misses everything. And another chance for Humboldt State to extend their lead. Rocky Brown's footwork. He's putting on a post clinic on the lower block. There's no one that can guard him. He's reverse pivoting out using shot that's getting to the rim. He is a hard handle. He can play inside and outside. He is the most dominant player on the floor right now. Frazier had the height advantage, but Brown really matching up well with him. And then he uh, draws a foul there. They're going to call that one. Fouls on number 25. Frazier. On Frazier, that's Sir. his first. Returning to great the great recognition, CCA understanding where the strength is coming from, who has Humble the high State hand basketball. and who has the matchup. They should be feeding Rocky Brown every time down the floor. Make sure his hands touch the basketball. They've switched. They put McMillan on Brown now. Brown falling away with the jumper. Looked like a pretty good shot. Didn't get it to go. Excellent shot, just rimmed out. Now Ballestero. Cox finds Adam Clyde. Now Cox in the corner with a three ball. Oh, in and out, unlucky. The difference today between UC San Diego and Pomona, every shot that San Diego is taking is being contested. As a result, San Diego is one for four from the three-point line. San Diego shooting under 30% from the field. Tough first half for them. Malik Morgan from three. Off front iron, rebound by Dyer. Here, San Diego has one assist so far in the game. Humboldt has five assists. Impressive defense from Humboldt State. They'll need to keep up that level of intensity. There's a jumper. That one's off. Rebound by Raheem Brown. And he draws the foul. That foul will be called on Zach McMillan. Looked like he made some high contact. Might have got him in the forehead. That'll be his third rebound here. Again, when you look at the difference between yesterday's game, UC San Diego is being contested on every shot. The passing lanes are 
shrunk on the floor. So they're doing a great job of contesting shots and making San Diego work hard. Brown traveled on that one. Travel violation. That's about the only thing he's done wrong tonight. <laughs> travel. Because he's done everything right so far. Ballesteros hey, hey, with it. Oh, brilliant inside pass to Clyde. And that's really been the story of UC San Diego's first half. They've missed a ton of shots at the rim, Eric. You're not going to get those opportunities, those shots. If they make half those shots, they cut this lead down. They're down by 10. I count five shots that they've missed right at the rim. So they're, they are hurting themselves offensively. They're running good offense, but they're not able to finish. Blizzard came in for Morgan. Tried to find Raheem Brown, and that was another turnover. Now Cox on the floor for UC San Diego. Corey Cox had a nice game yesterday. And really, you're seeing it again. UC San Diego having trouble with those interior shots that are usually money for them. Well, the difference is you have a very athletic bunch with Humboldt State. They're contesting every shot, so they're rushing their shots now. They're not taking their time. They're not using their fundamentals that they was using earlier in yesterday's ball game. Foul called. Joaquin Brown draws the foul. Foul's on number 33. Zach That'll McMillan be on Zach McMillan. Two quick fouls on McMillan. In the so think, Eric, that's number six one, shots they missed at the rim. If they make those six two, shots, Grand they're Jackson. up. Well, they're down Humble by four versus down by ten. And another foul, Rakim Brown, he, he, he's doing everything right now. He's even drawing foul after foul. As I mentioned, there is not a player on the floor for, for San Diego that can guard him right now. So they're doing a great job of just consistently feeding him. You yeah. have the ability for Whistler to knock the tray ball down. So they're feeding you inside and outside. They have a very good skill set with their fours and fives. You can tell they were really concerned with Brown. They forgot about Thomas Witzel, he buries a three, and the 13-point lead is the largest of the night for Humboldt State. Adam Clyde. knocks that one down. Long pass for Brown. I don't know how they threaded that in there. That was Lizotte looking for him, but the shot was off. He was under the rim. That's a tough shot. Now Jackson trying to give his team a spark. That one is too long. Lizotte for Dillard, and they'll slow it back down. That was an ill-advised shot by Jackson. Too early in the shot clock. He's not known to knock down the triple, so I would have gotten to my offense to get a good shot to the rim. Oh, Rattler lost the handles. Eventually scooped up there, and now a fight for it. Great play by Witzel to find Brown. No basket. There's a travel called on Rattler. Alert play by Witzel to grab that ball and feed it to... Malik Morgan there, but nothing comes of it. 3.20 left in the first half, 11-point lead for Humboldt State. They've really been in charge of this first half, but I really think the story might have to be used to San Diego's missed opportunity. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, they've missed six shots to the rim. So that's 12 points that we're talking about. So actually, if they make those 12 points, they're up by one. And so when they go back in the locker room, I'm sure a coach is going to say, hey, listen, guys, we're running our offense. We're doing exactly what we want to do. We just have to finish the shots. One thing as a coach, when you, when you develop the plays, you're going over your drills, whatnot, you only can do so much. You can't make the shot for the players. Your job is to develop offense, design offense to get open shots. That's what you're supposed to do. You put drills in place, contact drills, but when you get into the game, the players are responsible for making those shots, and that's so frustrating as a coach. And I'm sure the coaching staff in San Diego is saying, we're missing shots, we're doing everything we need to do, but as players, you have to do your part and make the shots. Humboldt State leading 29-18 over the Titans. See, San Diego was the only school to send both their men's and women's programs here to Stockton for the semifinals. 
the Tritons women's team lost in a thriller last night to Cal State East Bay, 79-77 in overtime. Tritons men's team trying to bring home a title. Bring the title down south to San Diego while Humboldt State trying to bring the title up north. Humboldt State the favorites right now as they have an 11-point lead. They've been solid in this first half. And there's a matchup between Chris the big men. This time won by Chris Hansen with a floater. I like the jump hook over his left shoulder. Nice fundamentals when he knocked down the shot. Witzel, the big man who's been known to shoot a three. He's got two in this game. Morgan, acrobatic attempt. How Malik about that with his Morgan. off hand? Wow, Malik Morgan with a right hand semi-hook shot there as he was falling away. He just threw up a prayer. Shows the strength of Morgan to take the off-balance shot with the contact. I like the officials to let him play through it. Off-ball foul called, I believe, on Witzel. Out of the timeout, San Diego ran a specific set for their big man he was able to produce. What do they do? They come right back to him again to see if he can get some more post touches because they de they've determined that if we go inside out, it'll open up our shooters. The difference between yesterday and today, their three-point basket is not falling. They're one for seven so far in the first half from behind the arc. Dyer looking for a shot, then finds Hanson. Now Grant Jackson finds Ballestero inside to Hansen. Just lockdown defense from Humboldt. No quality passes available. They're basically running the Houston San Diego off the three-point line. Huge fight for the rebound there. Dillard went up for it. It came last off of him. Fresh shot clock for UC San Diego. So Eric, what's going on is that San Diego's used a lot of three balls. Humboldt is running them off the three-point line, so it's speeding up their shots. As a result, they're one for eight so far in the first half. Ballestero to Hansen. Really is just a, a, a heck of an effort by Humboldt State to put so many men. Chris Hansen. A man on a man every time. That time knocked down by Hansen, who's had a very nice two or three minutes here. Two, two possessions in a row, Hansen has went over his left shoulder for a jump hook. That's a matchup they can go to throughout this game. Sometimes you wonder in these back-to-back -back games if a team will lose their energy or start to fade, maybe lose a little bit of the spark they had. Just it looks like both teams are just flying with the effort level. Difference here is San Diego's not knocking down their shots. Nice job by Malik Morgan using the ball screen for the pick and pop. Now a drive by Ballestero. They're trying to get it to Hansen. He's feeling it right now. Three straight field goals from Chris Hansen. As I said, that's a hard matchup going over his left shoulder. I will keep feeding him until they figure out how to stop it. Deficit cut to nine. Hansen with six straight points. And Brown draws another foul down low. So he was accidentally pushed by Dyer. Uh, Brown was looking to post up. Dyer energy pushed him down on the floor, so he had to call a foul on that particular play. But I like what's going on with San Diego. They're feeding Hanson three possessions in a row over his left shoulder, jump hook. Fundamental move, but difficult to stop. Brown to the line. Knocks down the first to restore the 10-point lead. They once led by as many as 13. Going to be a low-scoring first half for UC San Diego, no matter how you look at it. And that's a testament to both the great defense Justin and some missed shots, but how about that? UC San Diego. Humboldt State's Justin Everett knocks one down off a missed free throw. So a de facto three-point play there. And an impressive finish to this first half, perhaps, for Humboldt State as they lead by 12. Well, the energy level for Humboldt is outstanding. They've been able to do a great job of lockdown defense on the perimeters. 
They're running the three-point shooters off the line for San Diego. It's basically one shot and out for UC San Diego as they're shooting less than 30% from the field, and they're one for eight from the three-point line. So they're doing a good job of sharing the scouting report. One of the areas of emphasis for Coach Kinder was don't let those guys stand out and shoot tray balls. Let's run them off the line and use our defense and quickness on the perimeter. Out of the timeout, Jackson with it. The Tritons would love a bucket here at the end of the first half, one that's been very difficult offensively for them. If I was San Diego, I'll try to get the ball, another post touch to Hanson. Pass down low to Clyde. They wanted to travel, didn't get it. Three ball from Dyer. And you can see how frustrated Coach Kinder over on the Humboldt State bench is. Here's a three ball from Morgan at the buzzer. Malik Morgan restores the points that they lost on the Dyer jumper. A huge buzzer beater for Morgan, and it's a 12-point lead for the Jacks as they go into halftime. How about that from Malik Morgan? Humboldt State with all the momentum in this one as they lead 39 to 27. Morgan with five points, two rebounds, three assists. Joaquin Brown, seven points, five rebounds. Let's throw it to Coach Wallace for a quick interview. <laughs> 